Rub up your engines! Gary Campanella says, A Cadillac converter was removed, replaced with a straight pipe. Will my vehicle still pass inspection? Well, it's against the law to remove Cadillac converters in the United States as part of the anti-pollution system. That said, they'll run better without them because it's a restriction on the exhaust system. The only purpose of a catalytic converter is to burn on burn hydrocarbons so you don't pollute the atmosphere. That's the only thing that it does. If you live in a state that does emissions testing, of course, it will fail emissions because you no longer have a catalytic converter on it. A lot of times, I notice guys, when they inspect cars, they don't even put them up in the air anymore. They're just on the ground. If they don't jack them up, look under to see if it's there, you might be able to sneak by. <laughs> you never know. But it's against the law to take them off. And of course, if you don't have it on and you're in a state that does inspections, of course, it'll fail inspection because it doesn't have the catalytic converter. They can actually fine you for driving a car like that in some states. Not that good of an idea to try. States that don't do inspections, people don't care one way or another. Tennessee, they don't inspect. They did in Nashville, but I guess now they don't. People got mad and said, so if they don't look at it, it doesn't matter. If you live in an inspection state, it will fail the inspection. Now, you said you didn't authorize them to take them off. Well, they broke the law themselves. They're foolish to do something like that if you live in a state where they do inspections for emissions. Nathan says, would you recommend Ford F-150 5-liter V8 or Toyota Tundra 5.7? Well, in that case, I would recommend the Toyota V8. They can run forever. The Ford V8s are good too, but the Toyotas can just run and run four, five, six, hundred thousand million miles, right? But, of course, you can't buy a new one because the new ones only have the V6 twin turbos that they've had a few problems with. You're gonna get a big truck. Doesn't matter if you put an eight-cylinder or a six-cylinder engine in it. It's gonna use gas if you pull things and carry a lot of weight. It's like that new F-150 Lightning, the electric Ford. They say it can tow all this, yeah, and then it can go 80 miles and run out of electricity because the electric trucks can't pull a lot of weight or they use their energy up insanely quickly. If you're gonna a big truck like that, it's gonna get crappy gas mods if you do any kind of a pulling and towing anyways. So it really doesn't matter whether you get a six or an eight. The problem with that is it lies because the government says, well, we want higher gasoline, EPA, gas mileage ratings, right? Well, the V6 gets a better rating. They don't rate them full and pull and stuff. They just rate them on a dynamometer. So it looks better on paper than it actually is in the real world. David Christian and says, my RAV4 2.0 stalls. I changed the fuel pump, airflow sensor, and the upper oxygen sensors. Help. Well, first, <laughs> let's start from the very beginning. Don't guess with repairs. Get information data go from there. That's why I tell people, you might buy a scan tool, learn how to use it. There's a lot of information in it. RAV4s generally stall out. Maybe the airflow sensor's bad. You said you replaced it, okay? Use an OEM. Don't use one of these Chinese cheapies from auto parts stores, discount stores. They're garbage. You don't want to do that. You want to use a good one. If it's still stalling, watch my video. Make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. You can clean the throttle. The throttles do get dirty over time. Carbon gets in them and they're electronic throttles. They will stall if carbon's in there because then they don't close. The carbon keeps them from closing. Then the computer thinks you're sucking that much air in because it's open. It gives it too much fuel and it floods out and stalls. The other thing, which is extremely common on a RAV4 are vacuum leaks. If you've got a four-cylinder RAV4, often the intake manifold gasket goes bad. The stupid things don't cost much. You can get them for 25 bucks or something. And all you gotta do is take that plastic plenum off, put the new gasket, and put it back on. If it's sucking air, it'll do that. If you have a scan tool, it'll show that it's running lean. Then you know it's running lean, and it's often a vacuum leak that causes it to run lean and stall out. Now, once you get on a highway, it doesn't matter. You're going 60 miles an hour, you're sucking so much air. A little vacuum leak won't hurt it at all, but when it's idling, it'll make it stall. The Dark 2003 says, I got 2013 Camry four banger, ABS, brake and traction control light is on. Well, those systems all work together. Get a scan tool or pay a mechanic like me to hook it up to see what the codes are. It can be one of the wheel speed sensors either has gone bad or they're magnetic. A piece of steel or something got picked up and stuck on it and it doesn't work right. You can clean them off. You can check that physically, but it's better to have a scan tool because then it'll say like right front one and you know it's the right front one that's the problem makes it a lot easier it's a very complex system the abs the traction control here's something else you might also check if your check engine light is also on toyotas have weird software so if the check engine light comes on often it'll trip the abs and brake although there's nothing wrong with it so let's say you got a bad ignition coil it can trip the abs system but once you fix that and reset it then those won't come on even though those systems don't have a problem but if it's only the abs and the traction control and not the check engine light too then there is something wrong with those systems and you got to check them out the h2o man says how much weight does it normally take to balance a new michelin defender tire 
I have some that require eight ounces of weight and they still vibrate. If you had to put that much on, I would take the tires back and say, I want good tires. They were not manufactured right. Either the guys balance them, which are often idiots at a tire store that don't know what they're doing, and they can't balance them right. I had that happen with my son's van in Tennessee. Went to a tire store and they didn't balance it right. I had to do it at home. They used a quarter ounce here, half an ounce there, not eight ounces. Either your wheels bent, which case you need to fix it, or you got crappy tires. Take them back in the band new ones. They should not need that much weight. Chris Cohen says, what's the top reason for brake squeal? The absolute top reason is the brake pads are worn out. <laughs> the brake pads have brake pad material and they have a metal backing plate. When you wear out of the material, you get to the metal backing and then when you hit it, the metal backing plate now hits the rotor that's steel and then it makes noise. Squeak, squeak, squeak. But let's say you look at your brakes and they're thick. They're not worn out or anything. That is either worn rotors that are shiny and squealing or cheap brake pads. That's why I tell people if you don't like brake noise, use the best ceramic brake pads you can. I like the Akebono, A-K-E-B-O-N-O, Japanese company, but they make them for all kinds of cars. I have had cars that made horrible noises, were all worn out, and the owners would say, ah, I don't want to spend too much money on rotors and stuff, and I'm getting rid of the car soon. I said, well, just get Akebono pads, put them on. They won't make any noise. And even though the rotors were all screwed up, they didn't make any noise. A lot of it has to do with the pad material. You want a quality pad if you don't like noise. Now, if you're a real cheapskate and you just want a car that stops, cheap brake pads are generally harder. They often last longer, but they make a lot of noise. If you don't mind the noise, you can go cheap. Carport says, Scotty, can a lean running EGR condition cause a ride to be rougher? I replace my EGR and a car rides better. The actual suspension of the car, no. It has no effect on that. But if you mean running rougher, of course, if your EGR is bad and it's sucking air, it'll make the engine run incorrectly. And all modern cars are so complex that the engine and the transmission are both computer controlled and they feed back to each other. Even something like a bad EGR can even make the transmission kind of shift funky too. Now it isn't going to make it go over bumps any better, it has no effect on the suspension, but how your car runs down the road, yes, it can have a big effect on how it runs, how it shifts, if it shakes at idle, it can make a big deal of difference when you get a vacuum leak and you're running too lean. All right, Elon's at it again. Tesla just raised their supercharger rates for charging cars in California. If you need a full charge on one, it can be $30. As this technology starts trying to become mainstream, the price will just keep going up. He keeps raising the price of his cars. Not they're raising the price of the electricity. If something is in high demand, they raise the price. Well, there aren't that many electric cars out now. If there's going to be a whole bunch of millions and millions of them, guess what? They'll raise the prices even higher because they got you by the short and curlies. You spend all that money for that car, they can charge you whatever they want for the electricity. What are you going to do? Make your own? <laughs> yeah. Look with solar panels, they're 50 grand here, 60 grand there. Same thing with windmills. You want to put a real one on your house if it's even allowed in your area. Guys in the country do. That costs a whole bunch of money. It's supposed to be making it so it's more efficient, cost less. The cost just keeps going up. And of course, if the government gets involved, the price will go even higher. Giving money to build stations to charge them. So, <laughs> even in California now, they're already raising the rates and it will get even worse as time goes on if more and more people drive electric cars because there'll be more demand and so they will charge more. Well, Porsche pulled off a fast one. They did their IPO selling the Porsche stocks. They were even non-voting stocks. People will buy anything these days. Of course, it was owned by Volkswagen. Volkswagen got over 10 billion dollars in profit and is selling the IPO, right? But here's the funny thing. You know, think about the stock market. Volkswagen shares dropped 6.2%. One stock goes up, another one goes down. Like if one company buys another company, the company that's being bought out, their stock goes up. But usually the company that's buying the other company, their stock goes down. Although Volkswagen said they made all this money on that, they actually lost money over the value of their stock going down a bunch. It's rearranging the deck while the Titanic sinks if you ask me this whole thing. Why would anybody buy stock when they don't even get voting rights in it? It's just a way for these guys in Germany to get a bunch of money. They still control it. They still control over 51%. So they control the company. Oh, you can own a shaft push. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> They're going on the name. And of course, they're also putting a big money bet on electrification. If that fails, the stock will go. People fall for this name recognition stuff. It's it's absurd. Even though the stock markets all over the world are starting to really shake and 
come down. The IPO work, at least for the time being, but then again, let's look at the IPOs of some of these other companies like Rivian. They were real high, now they're back down to earth. So, <laughs> don't go on the short run if you're investing. That's all I gotta say. I wouldn't put money in a company like Porsche, especially since they still control it. They're just taking your money so they can play with it. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.